Mike, we're here today to talk about clones. Oh, God. Don't we talk about this kind of stuff in enough places, these old Macs or whatever? Like, I, Do we have to talk about this right now? The topic today is itchier than old Macs. Are they like, what? <laughs> today we're talking about Dolly the Sheep. Oh, okay. I see. I, I kind of, yeah, wall itchy. Yeah, I get it. Mm-hmm. Sure. Not my best mm-hmm. opening I've ever written nope. in hindsight. I do, but do you remember Dolly uh, in the news? Like, I remember this. I have a memory of this. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm glad that we're talking about this because it happened much closer to you than it did to me. I was mm-hmm. like 11 in 1997 when Dolly was made known to the world. Mm-hmm. But I remember it being all over the news, parents talking about it, people talking about it. It was a big deal. It was a big deal. So let's get into the story. Dolly was a female Finnish Dorset sheep and the first mammal clone from an adult somatic cell. These cells are present in all multicellular organisms and have been at the heart of a lot of cloning research. This gets pretty deep pretty quickly and way over our pay grade. But the important thing to know is that Dolly's genetic makeup came from one of these cells harvested from another sheep. It's important to know that Dolly was not the first animal to be cloned, but she's important, and you highlighted this, is that she was the first male to be cloned from an adult cell, proving that animals could be born as an exact copy of their parent, even if that parent was an adult. Dolly was cloned by scientists at the Roslyn Institute at the University of Edinburgh. This research institution has been around since 1917 with a focus on animal genetics and breeding research. Dolly was born in July of 1996, along with six other cloned sheep. But like we said, she was the only one cloned using genetic material from an adult. Her classmates, on the other hand, were made from embryonic cells. The the genetic material was harvested from another sheep's mammary gland cell, and it was the 90s, and so the team named her Dolly after Dolly Parton. Not the classiest move. What? what, Why? Came from the sheep's mammary gland. Dolly Parton. Oh, really? Is that why? Yeah, not good. Oh, come on. Not good. I, I didn't. I didn't attach those two things together in my brain. Oh boy. The process in which Dolly was created is rather fascinating. In a way, Dolly has three moms. One provided the egg, another the DNA, and a third carried the cloned embryo to term. The nucleus of the unfertilized egg cell was removed and replaced with the nucleus of a cell from the donor. That was then stimulated by electricity to start dividing and placed into the surrogate mother. On February 22, 1997, the Roslyn Institute announced the existence of Dolly to widespread media attention. Her announcement was timed with the release of a scientific paper describing the process used to create her. This sparked huge international debate about the benefits, dangers, and even the ethics of cloning, a debate that is still alive and well in corners of the world today, despite cloning's rapid spread after this discovery. Rather than me asking you the natural question of what do you think, how about we take a break instead? (laughs) Okay. (laughs) This episode of Ungenius is brought to you by Squarespace. Squarespace is the all-in-one platform for building your brand and growing your business online. You can stand out with a beautiful website, engage with your audience, and sell anything. Squarespace has got you covered for all of it. One of my favorite parts about Squarespace is their built-in SEO tools. Look, this stuff's complicated and confusing, but Squarespace makes it really easy to figure out what's going on. They have a suite of integrated features and useful guides to help help you maximize prominence among search results. You can use those insights to grow your business. You can see where site visitors are coming from, where sales are coming from. You can analyze all of it within Squarespace. You can also use those analytics in Squarespace email campaigns. You start with an email template and you customize it, send it out, and their built-in analytics measure the impact of each and every send. Squarespace is a fantastic place to build a website because it can grow with you as your needs change. Maybe you don't launch with a store, but six months down the road, you have enough of your artwork or whatever product you're making and you're ready to sell it. Well, you don't have to build a new website. You can add on the store functionality. Same thing with blogging or podcasting or a gallery. 
it's really easy to add and rearrange the sections of your website as your needs change over time. So head on over to squarespace.com slash ungeniused for a free trial. There is no credit card required to sign up. When you're ready to launch, use the offer code ungenius to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. That's squarespace.com slash ungeniused and the offer code ungenius to get 10% off your first purchase and to show your support for the show. Our thanks to Squarespace for supporting Ungenius and Relay FM. Dolly lived her entire life at the Roslyn Institute. She was bred with a ram and gave birth to six lambs in total. Bonnie, Sally, Rosie, Lucy, Darcy, and Cotton. Cotton's the best name. Sally and Rosie were twins, while the last three were triplets. All the names are good. I agree that Cotton is the best. Mm-hmm. Cotton's the best name. Cotton's the best name for a sheep, period. By the way, as we've been talking about a lot in this episode, I don't like that, like, what is that when it's like the word sheep is both the singular and the plural? Oh, yeah. It's weird, right? I don't like it. I wish that, like, they like one was called, like, a shep, and, like, as a group, they were called sheep. <laughs> one shep, I don't know why, but, two like, sheep. <laughs> I went saying one sheep aloud, like, I don't like it. Like, I don't like saying it. It's weird. Uh, it's weird. Dolly's genetic material was then also used for future clones. As of July 2016, four sheep, Daisy, Debbie, Diana, and Denise, were alive and genetically identical to Dolly. That's weird, right? Mm-hmm. It is like, weird. Are they, cl- are they also a clone of the original? Ooh. You know what I mean? Like, we're in the sheep of Theseus here. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's actually a way better joke than I thought it was going to be. I didn't. That's no, good. It's good, right? It's really good, because... Sheep and ship sound the same. Mm -hmm. A year after her birth, DNA tests done on Dolly showed signs of premature aging. It is thought that this was because she was cloned from an adult, effectively making her older than her actual age. That'll really put your mind in knots. Uh, This oddity did not seem to cause any health problems for Dolly, thankfully. And later research has shown that cloning does not result in widespread disease linked to age. That is so weird. It's... Mm-hmm. So she kind of became an adult faster? Well, it's like you It's like you start, you know, with like plus six years on your age, right? Because you are a newborn, but your DNA is already six years old. If, you know, the adult was six years old. That is so weird. Yeah, it's very strange. In September 2000, Dolly tested positive for JSRV. This is a virus that can cause lung cancer in sheep. Several animals are infected at the Roslyn Institute in this breakout. This can be common in sheep that are kept indoors, as Dolly was, and the Institute had received threats from those who thought cloning was unethical and dangerous. This did nothing to help that. Some animals died during that outbreak, but Dolly recovered and was diagnosed with arthritis the next year. It was managed with medication until Dolly started coughing in early 2003. A CT scan showed a tumor in her lungs, possibly because of the JSRV, and she was euthanized on February 14th of that year. That's pretty sad. It is sad. The Roslyn Institute donated her body to the National Museum of Scotland, where she has been a very popular exhibit for many years. In the years since, this method of cloning has been successful in pigs, deer, horses, and bulls, and has become more efficient. Back in 96, when Dolly came about, she was the only lamb to survive out of 277 attempts. It's a very particular number. Science is very specific. In 2014, scientists in China reported they had reached a 70 to 80% success rate in cloning pigs. And two years later, a Korean company announced it was producing 500 cloned embryos a day. When I first read this, I was halfway through the sentence i freaked out <laughs> but, but, right it's like a korean company's producing 500 pigs a day but no no it's not doing that <laughs> love pigs research has been done in resurrecting extinct species via cloning i don't like if this the, if you have the dna laying around i mean this is basically the plot of jurassic park Exactly. This is why I don't like this. In 2000, if this is successful, someone will try to make a T-Rex, you know? Someone's going to get eaten while sitting on the toilet. That's all I'm going to say. In 2009, a research group based in Spain attempted to clone an extinct species of wild mountain goat, but unfortunately, the newborn animal died shortly after birth. They got pretty far, though, right? Yeah. Like, they got that far. Well, that seems pretty impressive, at least. 
In 2017, researchers in China made two cloned monkeys using the same methodology that created Dolly. China has also been at the center of the debate around genetic modification of human embryos. But that is way beyond the scope of this episode. Yep, not not getting into that. <laughs> Our thanks to Liam for sending this topic in. If you want to go read more about Dolly, I have a bunch of stuff in the show notes. It's in your podcast player or it's on the web at relay.fm slash ungeniused slash 160. There you get in touch. There's an email link. Send us your favorite topic on Wikipedia. It'll go on our list. You can also find us online. Mike is on Twitter as I-M-Y-K-E. And you can follow me there as I-S-M-H. Until next time where we mess around with genetic material, Mike, say goodbye. Bye-bye. Bye, y'all.